Hey Figs, uh, I just saw your most recent video. Um, first thing I would tell you is, um, and I don't know who suggested the book to you, um, but stay the hell away from Seraphim Rose and his writings. And uh, who I don't know who suggested Christ Eternal Tao to you, but uh, any of these monastic writings, especially any of the newer ones, I'd say stay away from the Philokalia also. Stay away from uh, the Ladder of Divine Ascent. That's the thing that gets read um, about as much as the, it, it's second to the Bible, basically, in reading in Orthodox circles. Uh, listen to Archbishop Bazaar, if you don't have anything to read. Archbishop Bazaar, um, David P. Witham, Gambler, uh, Mr. Richard Winkle. Uh, David P. with him, leave him in, uh, him and uh, Mr. Richard Winkle came from Protestantism. Gambler has a beautiful heart, he's raised in Orthodoxy, and uh, can give you a lot of insight, uh, really good guy. Um, just want to let you know that I'm, I'm worse at praying and worse at fasting, worse at being a Christian than you are, trust me. Uh, now, not being officially part of the church, whether through chrismation or baptism or any type of being accepted in the church, and not even being catechumen yet, I'd say a lot of these things are not binding upon you, all right? But again, man still has the natural need to draw near to God. We do. We do. Me and you are called, and so are all those coming towards orthodoxy. We, we, we've been called, and we hear it, and we respond. Um... I would say when, when you have a habit of prayer, as you do, then try just going a few days without praying. You'll, you'll, you'll wind up back praying. Um, when, and I was told this by somebody, it wasn't even Orthodox, they were Anglican. He said, uh, get this thing from physics, when atoms are really close to each other, they don't seem to know each other, that each other's there. It's the same quantum physics or something. The farther they get, the stronger they feel the pull. <clears throat> so the closer you are to orthodoxy, a lot of times it seems like it's not there. But then when you're battling heretics like Jehovah's Witness or Mormons or Muslims or, you know, uh, even pagans and stuff like that, and just an ideological, and you see, whoa, I'm really orthodox, you know, or when you're away from it for a while. Um, but stay away from Seraphim Rose, monastic writings, um, the Christ the Eternal Tao, uh, I, I wouldn't touch it. where you're at right now. The books I would suggest um, would be Dancing Alone by Frank Schaefer. Um, I hear from a lot of people who were Protestants came Orthodox. It's a great book. Um, there's one, there's books by Carlton Clark who came from being a Baptist minister into Orthodoxy. I believe I have his book Faith, um, The Orthodox Way, and I will. Um, I believe it's in the other room I'll send it to you as well. If I can find it. I there's one the the sword and the fire or something like that. It, it, that talks about the hopes of union and trinity and yeah, the most beautiful but simple but down to earth way and it's like God. You know, but uh, these monastic writings don't even touch them. That's for the monastics. What's good for the monastic is not what's good for the the lady. What's good for the lady is not what's good for the monastic. All right, I have a lot of these things where you have to be perfect. They say, well, then why for the grace of Christ? You know, this is ridiculous. This is not what they're, really, you know. But then you have to say, oh, wait, that's for them. And these are teaching tools for them, not for us. But sometimes they can forget that, and sometimes we can forget that. And when somebody's been on Mount Athos for 60 years and says, oh, this will help the person in the pew. Bang. I, I don't know. Uh, yes, we should strive for all of that. But at the end of the day, the best weapon we have is the Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. In this, the prayer word. And uh, it's good to have something physical because when you're doing this, you don't want it just to be a mantra so that, you know, it's like, oh, my, my mind escaped my body and, and stuff like that. You know, I have something to ground you. Even if it's like a rosary or something like that, you know, because in the beginning there, this didn't exist. This is something that 
then um, the church came into and it's funny i always thought the way of the pilgrim is beautiful as well i mean i read that and i was like this is awesome and i read it again and then i read it again and it's very short um it was written about the turn around the turn of the last century just before the turn of the last century um, so just about a, approximately just over 100 years ago or so um but uh stay away from christ's eternal Tao. stay away from writings of Seraphim Rose. Seraphim Rose didn't write Christ in Eternal Doubt, but that same strain then influenced uh, Seraphim Rose. Any monastic writings, right? That's, that's, that's not where you're at. That's not, uh, even to me, that stuff seems odd and almost Gnostic and not even Orthodox. Um, concentrate on the, uh, the Nicene Creed. Is there any, I mean, I would ask anybody, is there anything in here that's not found in scripture the funny thing is the answer is no why because that was the back check of determining what goes into the new testament um and uh there's there's really no dispute on that um at least what was settled at nicaea so scripture reflects the creed and the creed reflects scripture and these are, these are beautiful things um people might have a problem with things like Catholic, and because they, they don't know what understand what that means. Um, but uh, if you're going to read any writings that are, you know, like ancient or anything like that, Ignatius of Antioch, the Didache, these things. Um, but uh, don't don't worry, and I know that's that's easier said than done. <laughs> but yeah, if you try and just, oh, I don't want to pray, and then you naturally come into it with joy, right? Or, you know, like, just, oh, like, I need to, well, just don't pray from now on. I'm not going to, I mean, <clears throat> even in my darkest days, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm done with this and that. I find myself back in the, the icon corner, you know, singing the Theotokian or something like that. Um, remember, God is a God of love. A lot of these things of, oh, you have to live a perfect life, this and that. In Christ, we do live a perfect life. All right, if, if any of these Gnostics or any of these people influenced from the Talons has ever come and tell you um, you have to earn the grace of Christ or any demon pops up and can uh, convict you of being a sinner and not repenting properly and this and that, say I, I wholeheartedly agree and I will agree to any even false accusations against me but I put my faith in Christ and as soon as you say Christ, the demons need to run. I'll send you a video I did on the Jesus Prayer. I describe prayer pretty good in there, even in the poor, stupid way that I speak. Um, but peace to you, I will. Um, message me anytime you want. Um, but uh, I would tell you to stay, stay away from that kind of stuff. Um, any of the monastic writings. Peace to you. Take it easy. Make up some Serbia, Syria, and Ireland. <laughs>